Well, in honor of Mother's Day, I figured I would celebrate the creator of Mother. And that is none other you, than... You big brain Spencer, you done it again. <laughs> Let's look at me go. You've been thinking about this ever since you've been a Mother fan. Yeah. Ever since you've been a mother. Ever since, yeah, well, mother, yeah. I mean, when I breastfeed my children, I'm always thinking about playing mother. Their dad's nips. <laughs> Tell me all about Reggie fils <laughs> No. We're talking about <laughs> Shige Sato Itoi. Uh, I'll get through the boring stuff real quick. Uh, he was born on November 10th, 1948. He was a heavy smoker until he quit in 2002. Married to actress Kanako Higuchi since 1993. And he has asthma. There's some cool details about him. As, Maybe he should as, stop smoking. As, Glad as, he stopped, I guess. But <laughs> Anyway, uh, he is a Japanese copywriter, essayist, lyricist, game designer, and actor. He is the editor-in-chief of a website called Almost Daily Itoi Newspaper. Um, best known outside of Japan for his work on the Earthbound slash Mother series. Uh, during the 80s, he established his profession in copywriting uh, and then co-authored a collection of short stories called Let's Meet in a Dream. He branched into writing essays, lyrics, and in 19... 19- 89 around there um he created a company called ape inc ape inc sorry and uh their first game was mother which was an rpg inspired by dragon quest uh did you say pink floyd although (laughs) Mother, do you think they'll drop the ball? <laughs> <laughs> Although I do have an interesting thing about that. Um, it's clearly inspired to me by Dragon Quest, but according to Itoi himself, he says, it wasn't an influence, but the game that had the biggest impact on me was definitely Dragon Quest Three. But since it's become clear to me that our approach to making games is different, that impact has somewhat cooled. For me, I'm trying to create an experience that while being a game is like a movie. So, Mother, of course, stars in N10. He is a, he's a boy, and it's supposed to mimic a modern-day setting instead of a past setting. And it's really cool. He wrote, I went through a period where... Or no, no, no let, me, let me get to this one. Um, the title Mother has various meanings. Bosen means mothership, which is probably the closest. RPGs in a medieval Europe setting are definitely flourishing these days, but I don't know anything about medieval Europe, and I suspect no one else does either. If you want to know the truth, it seems that everyone just bases their ideas off famous works like The Lord of the Rings. So <laughs> it's a pretty harsh words for me to talk about people making RPGs at the time. Uh, just like no one knows what they're doing, so I'm just going to make a modern day one. And yeah, this is gold. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's cool to make just a modern day RPG um, where you you uh, enjoyed the characters and, and got to name them yourself. And he said it, it was really inspired by a trip he took to Chicago. And he was just admired all the buildings and how the, uh, the, the people lived in, in the setting there. But he says that the main character isn't necessarily American or whatever. He says just whatever you feel is appropriate for you. So if you're... He says in Japan, people probably just think of him as a Japanese guy. And here they probably think of him as that. So um, really cool stuff from him. He's just such a kind of like Yoko Taro. He, he's done a lot of things often before. In this case, he did a lot of it before becoming a video game developer. So it was really, it was really weird because a lot of people didn't think that he could just jump into video game development and actually create anything uh, because he was more of a text guy he was more like he wrote stuff and he even did some voiceover work and uh what i thought i'm not a big uh japanese guy but i i'm pretty sure this is a pretty big deal uh an animated fantasy film um called my neighbor totoro he had a voice role in that 
It's a Ghibli movie. Yeah, I've always I've heard of that, which I was surprised. I didn't think I'd have heard of anything like that. But played the smoker. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he plays smoker smoker McGee. That's why Totoro had those cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he played a cigarette. <laughs> Just. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so he did all that stuff beforehand, so it was kind of interesting that he jumped into playing games. He did say, as far as his influences go, um, I went through a period where I played Famicom games to a degree most would consider an obsession. That was how I started to think about making games. If it were me, I'd do this here instead. Around that time I visited Nintendo in Kyoto on a separate business matter, I thought, this is my chance, I can't let this opportunity get away. And I brought some game design plans I had created with me. So he came in as just a fan, which I think is kind of neat. Like, it, it, But he had a certain amount of clout that he could actually make something. Because like, I think all of us as fans are like, if I could make my game, it would be like this. But no one would ever listen to us because we're just a bunch of idiots. But I guess he had a certain level of clout, so he was able to create his own situation. And, and clearly learned how to code and everything, which is really neat. Uh, of course... In, in America, we didn't really get Mother, but we got Mother 2, Earthbound, which was really awesome. And it's just a branch of of, uh, of that. It's just a more upgraded version. And I couldn't find a lot of great stuff from him, although I didn't look that hard. Um, but I did find a really interesting interview from Iwata, and it shed some light on just, you know, how the, the process of that. And he said... Um, I heard you had to scrap everything and start completely over. He's, so, so Iwata said, that's right, but a lot of the design work was already done, so we were able to really focus on the development and our work. Dividing things up like that can be very effective if it's done right, allowing each team member's individual abilities to shine through. In fact, many of the members of that development team became the key people we rely on today. I also met Itoi then. Itoi was very interested in the way we made games at HAL, and I was very interested in the way he thought. Of course, I never imagined we'd become such good personal friends. In terms of Mother 3, Iwata said, uh, Mother 3, well, for Mother 3, we tried a whole new process for development. And at this time, they were talking about the N64. <laughs> Mother 3. Oh, no. So, so, to be frank, it was a management mistake on my part. If we hadn't cared about the quality, we could have released it right away, and the core of the game engine was actually completed very early on when the N64 was still new. However, over at Nintendo, Miyamoto had gone and created a masterpiece in Super Mario 64. I hope it don't, won't sound rude to say this about someone like Miyamoto, who has received so many awards from all over the world, but I wanted Hal to try and make a game of the, that same caliber, something that could stand shoulder to shoulder with Miyamoto's work. But how to do it? We studied and learned a number of new development methods, and the whole staff had to get used to them. We had to first distill the essence of a great game into distinct points and then reassemble those ideas into a coherent game. But all that took a huge amount of time. So basically, something that I gleam from Itoi, as much as I respect him and, and like his work, uh, specifically the Mother series, because he has done a couple of other things, um, I get the sense that that it, there is a problem with him not really being a game developer first and trying to dip his toes so heavily into like making crazy game mechanics and ideas. And I would guess that a lot of his reach probably ex exceeded his grasp as the old saying goes. And he probably is very ambitious and, and likely that was a cause of mother three, not really happening for a while. Um, of course it did end up happening in 2006 as a game boy advance game. Uh, which, of course, never officially got a release over here. And uh, it's a great game, but uh, it's it's just disappointing it never came out. And I, I've heard a lot of rumors about why it can't come out here, including soundtrack issues due to the music. There's like a licensing issue somewhere in there, um, which seems kind of silly. I mean, I think they could just change the music and, and re-release it, I would think. But a lot of, a lot of weird stuff with that. Um, but very a very interesting guy as far as what he was able to to create in a in a gaming world like what like a fan's perspective into making video games it's kind of interesting and i do want to leave it with that he did try to release another game on the n64 called cabbage it's a really weird game i was trying to read it and try to collect some notes but basically the gist of it is it takes place in a garden that you could customize yourself and you're raising like little animals in the garden 
and it was supposed to have connections to the Game Boy, and you could bring your your like characters over, and it was. It's like a mixture, some weird mixture of like Pokemon and Tamagotchi and Life Sim all combined into one. Um, very ambitious, like I said, as other stuff is and tries to do a lot of things at once and never came out. It was supposed to be for the N64 DD, which probably also has something to do with the failure. Um, but you can see a lot, a lot of the stuff they took from it, they applied outward. So you're seeing it in Nintendo Dogs, Animal Crossing. A lot of those games took the ideas from that and lessons learned and, and supplied it outward. So at least there's some some positivity coming from that game. So, Wait, so you're saying if the main character of Mother was a dog, he'd be called an attend dog? Yes. That is, yeah, okay. that is expert, Teddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I, I just wanted to ask you a question, Spencer. Spencer. Um, because I, you know, I played... I haven't beaten them, but I've played some Earthbound and some other three. I, I've I never played the first Mother yet. I had to have it though. Um, is that the what's striking to me like to, like to me uh, about those games are the sense of humor? Did you read anything about like the the, the sense of humor that like went into those games or anything? Uh, well, he didn't necessarily. At least what I read didn't speak about the sense of humor, but it's his voice, and he spent mm-hmm. a lot of time working on the the lines. He said he was tired okay. of. At the time, now this has changed. This is partly probably because of him, but this this is a he, he at the time he was complaining that the the characters were so flat. Like when you go to a town oh, and wow. they'd be like, the the king is Spencer freeze. Evil. Oh, did I freeze? I hope not. Did I freeze? Did, did somebody cast Blizzard? Oh, I still oh, have you guys. Is he? Did Spencer go to Iceland? Am I still frozen? Oh, there you are. There you are. Oh, okay. It's okay on my end. It's not frozen at all. So I, I don't know. We're okay. Did you freeze on me hacking a loogie? No, no. You guys are all in okay. perfect motion. Um, oh, I could do it. So you heard those terrible. So you heard those terrible things I said about you. Yeah, yeah. I heard those, Alex the Prophet. <sighs> I won't forget. Oh no. Uh, but but yeah, they they uh, oh, Teddy, come on. <laughs> oh. That's true. Continue. It's for the ASMR. Uh, Giant Pokemon Lugia. But yeah, he was he was tired of hearing the same dialogue from townspeople, and they would just say like the king is bad or the the there's a key under the rug or something. And so he wanted them, them to have multiple things they could say, or even you could interact with them to say. I think one of one of the early interactions in Mother Two Earthbound, really clever, is you go to like a. You go to a thing like a, a a guy's house, and he's not. A, you just talk to the door, and he says, "Famous Beatles song, blank 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 today." Do you know the answer? And it's a yes or no question. Of course, if you say yes, it's yesterday. But it's just like clever things like that throughout sprinkled throughout the game. It's like a really cool, really cool dialogue with his stuff. And I think I think too on top of that, there's like a whole. Nowadays, there's like a whole push that says Earthbound inspired. Like it's almost like a genre of RPG called Earthbound inspired, where the point is to be kooky. But I think that really misses the point on Earthbound. Earthbound is way more than that. Like at first, it seems that way, but as you play it, there's a very deep and dark thing in the background of it. There's just a lot more thought that goes into it than just being kooky. So I get a little irritated when I see like Earthbound inspired. It's just some goofy ass game. So <laughs> I think um with the coding thing, to my understanding, a lot of people came into Nintendo without the technical skills. Like I was even reading with the music guys, uh, they would ask first, like, do you know, can you play us some music? Okay, cool. And then they teach them the programming stuff later. Um but I could understand how long term, if it's not working out, like that might not be a thing. But you'd think they'd make a space for him in the company if they really valued him now. Yeah, yeah. He's kind of an outcast almost. <laughs> he doesn't really have any projects or anything. He doesn't do anything. Maybe he doesn't want to. I don't know. I, I guess that would be a good question. That's what I would ask him if I were to meet up with him at a. Hey, uh, don't ask it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a, you know that that's just like 
to, to me that's just like i i hear stories about like video like japanese video game culture a lot and it's like always like they they almost they seem to respect but they almost don't I don't they almost don't respect their their developers <laughs> a lot of the time where it's like, <laughs> oh, you made one of the one of the greatest, you know, most inspiring games of all time. Well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, what have you done lately? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it seems to be like an ongoing thing where, you know, we're like, well, man, they must be held in such high regard. And like a few are obviously you know, like you mentioned Miyamoto, like obviously he is like he's put in charge of like theme parks and movies and shit now. But like there's a lot of them that like from that era that made such important games. And it's like, well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think, though, that that's an interesting niche that he tackled? Like I, I always think when when we bring up the mother and the earth or the Shige Sato, yeah, right? Shige Sato Itoi, Shige Sato Itoi, were there really no RPGs that were not or that were like outside of Europe influenced at that time? I guess it's NES or Famicom. Yeah, so, or, uh, not not really. I mean, like, well, f- Fantasy Star had that come out yet in 89 yeah but that's like that's still like sci-fi influenced it's not necessarily it's a little medieval-y a little sci-fi a little medieval it's got a mix it's a little little mix (laughs) nice mixture star ocean out no (laughs) was uh, atelier riza (laughs) (laughs) to throw it in the pot and make a shoe (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah, we got Dragon Quest, pick. you got Final Fantasy, Ultima. I mean those those oh, games. Well, are I, I, very I, was, I was thinking strictly like like strictly like like NES. I mean I mean I guess I guess Fantasy Star is not NES, but you know. Um, Crystallis. Yeah, yeah, Crystallis. Hexanadu, which is part of this is the Xanadu thing, which is already a PC series, so it doesn't count. Oh, okay. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking like NES RPGs. Yeah, there's not a lot. Yeah. I mean, what you mentioned the whole thing about like Lord of the Rings inspired, which I think is hilarious. I hate Lord of the Rings, so <laughs> it's, it's just it's not... <laughs> have you read oh, okay. it or watched it? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm not a fantasy guy. Like when it comes to like watching or like or reading, I just bores the hell out of me. So I've tried stuff like that, and I'm just not into it. So also pisses me off. I mean, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but you know what pisses me off? What is like this person wrote for um, Game of Thrones? I'm like, oh, you mean a show that's based on fucking like old ass books <laughs> that are? It's like they didn't write shit. <laughs> well they adapted it yeah, no <laughs> yeah yeah i guess <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever <laughs> anyway <laughs> pick location spencer um yellow land or no 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 e- eagle land eagle land okay i want to go to adventure so land no. So you're at an ice convention in Eagle Land. You come across. Oh, uh, hold on. What's his name? Yeah. Uh, Shige Sato Itoi. Thank you. Shige Sato Itoi. I knew. I knew Itoi. They couldn't get them in the first one. Um, and you you see him. He's eating a a, a nice uh, drumstick, presumably from an eagle. They, they cooked it up. Challenge down on the world. Endangered species. Yeah. He's not from America. He doesn't care. <laughs> oh, okay. That's good. <laughs> He's just enjoying himself a nice drumstick. Um, and you can ask him one question. What is it? Yeah, it would probably be what is your status with Nintendo? Like, can you. Can you release Mother 3 somehow? Like, what? what's the reason you can't? And can we work around it somehow? Do you, do you think their relationship could be summed up in a Taylor Swift breakup song? 
Yes. <laughs> I think it was. What was it? <laughs> yeah, trouble. Is that a is that a Taylor Swift song? Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's called Trouble, but I know that's the, the chorus, so I'm guessing it probably is. Do you have it for us? Uh, let me look at the lyrics. That might bring when the melody. When you said Trouble, I was, thinking, uh, I was thinking Cage the Elephant. Like, trouble on my left, trouble on my right. Something, something every night. Yeah, that's oh. another one. You know what song? Oh, you've you've the heard it. Rules. He just... Uh, yeah. Trouble kinda, on my left, trouble on my right. Uh, you gotta get some KGL because things, because I knew you were trouble when you walked in. It's a shame on me now. Flew to places I'd never been. <laughs> Ow! Ooh! Trouble, like an, trouble, I, trouble. Uh, yeah. If you just heard Spencer sing Taylor Swift. Well, we left the number to a therapist in the description below. <laughs> he also You're forgot lying. to tell Shigesato Itoi one thing. Yeah, make a forgot. video response. Yeah, it's called "I knew you were trouble," not just trouble, but there, yeah, same thing. Uh, but yeah, I would tell him to make a video response about Mother Three. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned it. Uh, I've always wondered. It's like the music thing for that game is the issue, right? But like, just fucking change it. I'll do it. I'll sing some songs. Okay, we'll get Alex yeah. to, to fix the music problem. Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> okay, he just stole. He literally, he literally he just stole that. another song I from another cover. Well, I no, that, but it's their it's their song from their from they own it, so I can't steal it. You do it backwards. It's going back into their. No. <laughs> I could do it in editing. <laughs> My brain can't even process it. <laughs> yeah. There you have it. Do that one backwards. <laughs> I love, I love that song because it sounds like they dropped the synthesizer down the like a flight of stairs at the end. It's like <laughs> yeah, it's like if you can hear like somebody just smashing down the stairs. <laughs> Let us know in the comments below who's your mommy daddy. Honor of Mother's Day. Who's your daddy? Make a video which response. father? Which father is breastfeeding you this Mother's Day? Ooh. Right now, all you watch her episode. Are yeah. you sucking the teat of your daddy? Get that man milk. <laughs> Hey y'all, don't forget to subscribe to them button mappers. 